Hi, Dr. Blake. My name is Brienne Horlock, and this is my head to toe assessment. Here's a 360 of the room. I'm first going to start off by washing my hands. Wiping my stethoscope. Wiping my pen light. And donning gloves. Hi, my name is Brienne and I'm going to perform a head to toe assessment to ensure there are no abnormalities. Is that okay? Yes. Before we start, do you need to empty your bladder? No. I'm now going to provide the patient with some privacy. Patient is around 18 years old. Skin color is white and there are no noticeable odors. Patient is nourished. nourished. Body structures are symmetrical. Patient maintains good posture and there are no physical deformities. Patient seems happy and in a good mood. Speech is good and clear. Patient's personal hygiene is good and patient maintains eye contact. I'm now going to test the patient's gait. Could you stand up and walk towards me, please? Turn around, walk back, and sit down. Patient's strides, coordinates, and balance are all even. I'm now going to inspect the patient's breathing. Patient's breathing is consistent, therefore there are no signs of distress. I'm now going to check the patient's alertness. What is your name? Dario. Do you know where you are? I'm at the hospital. Do you know what day of the week it is? It's Tuesday. Patient is alert and oriented. I'm now going to inspect and palpate the patient's skull. Any pain? No. Patient's skull is normal symphalic shape. Patient is not in any pain and there's no tenderness, no lesions, no lumps, no scarring, and there's no edema. I'm now going to inspect the patient's hair. Patient's hair is black, thick, and wavy. There are no foreign bodies or infestations. I'm now going to palpate the patient's facial structures. Any pain? No. Patient is not experiencing any pain. There is no tenderness. Patient's facial structures are symmetrical. There are no lesions, no scars, no edema. Patient does have facial acne. I'm now going to perform cranial nerve number seven test. Can you smile with teeth, frown, raise eyebrows, puff cheeks, close eyes tightly. Patient's facial structures are symmetrical, therefore there's no damage to cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. I'm now going to inspect the patient's eyes. Patient's eyelashes and eyelids are intact. The skin is intact. There's no ptosis, no lid leg, no periorbital edema. There is no discharge, no lesions or any scars or swelling. Patient has equal lash distribution. Patient's eyebrows are black, they are thick and they are bilateral and they move symmetrically when patient's facial expressions change. There is no scaling or any lesions. Patient's eyeballs are moist and glossy. Conjunctiva is white and sclera. Conjunctiva is clear and sclera is white. There is pink on lower eyelid and patient does not have any watery eyes and there is no lesions or any swelling. I'm now going to inspect the patient's pupils using Perla. Patient's pupils are four millimeters. They are both round and symmetrical. I'm now going to perform the direct consensual light reflex exam. Patient's pupils constrict. I'm now going to perform the visual reflex accommodation exam. Look at my pen light. Patient's pupils converge. Patient's pupils are equal, reactive, and responsive to light and accommodation. Therefore, there are no problems with cranial nerve number three, the ocular motor. 
I am now going to inspect the patient's ears. Patient's ears are symmetrical and they are, is, there is no uh, discharge. I'm now going to palpate for any tenderness. Oracle and tragus. There are no, there's no tenderness. I'm now going to perform the whisper test. Could you cover one ear for me, please? It repeat after me. Napkin, orange, cactus. Cover your other ear. Napkin, orange, cactus. Patient has successfully repeated the sentence back to me. Therefore, there are no issues with the whisper test. I'm now going to inspect the patient's nose and sinuses. Patient's nose is midline. There's no pressing or any discharge. And there are no signs of nostril flaring. I'm now going to palpate the patient's sinuses. Frontal, maxillary, any pain? No. Patient is not as... Patient is not in any pain and only feels minor pressure. I'm now going to inspect the patient's mouth and pharynx. Patient's lips are pink. They are symmetrical and hydrated. There are no lesions or any swelling. Patient's gums are pink. There are no signs of bleeding, no lesions or any swelling. Patient's teeth are white, polished, and straight. They are also square, and there are no signs of any looseness. Can you stick your tongue out for me, please? Put it side to side. Put it through your mouth. Stick it back in. Patient's tongue is pink. It is symmetrical. It is hydrated. There are no lesions or any swelling. Patient's soft, hard and soft palate are pink. No lesions, and the structures are intact. I'm now going to perform cranial nerve number 9, 10, and 12 test. Could you stick your tongue out, please, and say ah? Uh. Patient's soft palate rises and uvula is midline. Therefore, there are no issues with cranial nerve number 9, the glossopharyngeal, and cranial nerve number 10, the vagus. Could you stick your tongue out for me, please? Put it side to side. Say light, tight, dynamite. Light, tight, dynamite. Speech is clear and there are no tremors, therefore there are no issues with cranial nerve number 12, the hypoglossal. I am now going to inspect and palpate the patient's neck. Any pain? No. Patient is not experiencing any pain or tenderness. There are no lesions, no scarring, no edema. Patient's neck is symmetrical. There is no crepitus, and there are no masses. And the color is even, is distributed evenly. I'm now going to palpate the patient's carotid arteries. I would hold for one minute, and hold for one minute. Patient's rate is 80 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular. Grade is plus two, and strength is plus two. I'm now going to perform cranial nerve number 11 test. Shrug your shoulders for me, please. Put them down. Shrug against resistance. Okay, put them down. Turn your head against resistance. Okay, and the other side. Okay. Patient is able to hold against resistance, therefore there are no issues with cranial nerve number 11, which is the spinal accessory. I'm now going to inspect the patient's arms. Patient's arms are symmetrical. There are no visible masses, no lesions, no edema, and there are no scars. Patient's coloring is evenly distributed. I'm not going to palpate the patient's arms. Any pain? No. Patient is not experiencing any pain. There's no tenderness. There are no masses, no lesions, no scarring. Patient's coloring is evenly distributed and patient's temperature is slightly warm. I'm now going to inspect the patient's capillary refill. Patient's capillary refill is less than two seconds. I'm now going to palpate the patient's radial pulse. I would hold for 15 seconds multiplied by four. Patient's rate is 82 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular and quality is equal. 
I'm now going to palpate the patient's brachial pulse. I would hold for 15 seconds and multiply by 4. Patient's rate is 79 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular and quality is equal. I'm now going to inspect the patient's legs. Patient's legs are symmetrical. There are no lesions, no scarring, no edema. Patient has equal hair distribution and color is even, evenly distributed throughout. I'm now going to palpate the patient's legs. Any pain? No. Patient is not experiencing any pain or tenderness. There are no lesions, no scarring. Hair distribution is equal and coloring is equal throughout. Patient's temperature is slightly warm. I'm now going to inspect the patient's capillary reflow. Patient's capillary reflow is less than two seconds. I'm now going to palpate the patient's posterior tibialis pulse. I would hold for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Patient's rate is 82 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular and quality is equal. I'm now going to palpate the patient's dorsalis pedis pulse. I would hold for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Patient's rate is 80 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular and quality is equal. I'm now going to inspect the patient's thorax. Can you turn around for me, please? Patient's thorax is symmetrical. There are no lesions, no scarring, no skeletal deformities. Color is equally dis distributed. Hair is, hair distribution is equal and there are no visible masses. I'm now going to state the patient's AP rate, A anterior posterior transverse ratio. Can you lift your arms for me, please? Patient's ratio is one to two. I'm now going to palpate the patient's thorax. Any pain? No. Take a deep breath in and out. Patient is not in any pain. And patient is not in any pain. There is no tenderness, no masses. There is no lesions or any swelling. Patient has equal chest expansion, and patient's temperature is slightly warm, and color is color distribution is equal throughout. I'm now going to percuss for resonance. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine. Normal resonance sounds are heard when percussing. I'm now going to auscultate the patient's lung sounds. Take a deep breath in and out. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. I'm now hearing bronchial ves vesicular lung sounds. Five, five, six, six, seven. I'm now hearing vesicular lung sounds. Seven. Eight, nine, eight, nine. Patient's rate is 18 breaths per minute. Rhythm is regular and there is no advantageous lung sounds. I'm now going to auscultate the patient's heart. Could you face towards me, please? Patient's right second inner, inner space is the aortic valve. 
left second inner space is the pulmonic valve left sternal left lower sternal border third intercostal space is herbs point fifth intercostal space lower left sternal border is the tricuspid valve and fifth intercostal space left lower sternal border around the mid mid clavicular line is the mitral valve s1 sounds are best heard at the apex of the heart where the tricuspid and mitral valves are located and s2 sounds are best heard at the base of the heart where the atrial and pulmonic walls are located patient's rate is 84 beats per minute rhythm is regular and I hear no extra heart sounds. I'm now going to inspect the patient's abdomen. Lay down for me, please. I am now going to drape the patient. As we can see, the abdomen is symmetrical. There are no lesions or any swelling. Hair distribution is normal and color is equal throughout. I am now going to auscultate the patient's abdomen. Right lower quadrant, right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, I hear gurgling in all four quadrants and it is hyperactive. I'm now going to percuss the in all four quadrants. Right lower quadrant, right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant. General tympani is heard. I'm now going to Palpate the patient's abdomen. Right lower quadrant. There are no superficial masses or rigidity. Right upper quadrant, no superficial masses or rigidity. Left upper quadrant, no superficial masses or rigidity. And left lower quadrant, no superficial masses or rigidity. I'm now going to perform, you can sit up for me. I'm now going to perform the active range of motion test. Flexion of the fingers. Extension. Flexion of the wrist. Extension. Radial deviation. Ulnar deviation. Flexion of the elbow. Extension. Supination. Pronation. Adduction. Abduction. Internal rotation. External rotation. I'm now going to perform the hand grip test. Grab my hand for me, please. Okay. And the other side. Okay, let go. Patient's grip is symmetrical on both sides and it is strong. I'm now going to perform the range of motion test on the feet. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. It is symmetrical on both sides and there's no, patient seems to be in no pain, no crepitation and there are no limited range of motion. That is my head to toe assessment. Here's a 360 of the room.